Hey folks, and welcome to another Passion for Sound audio review. Today we're taking a look at the T-Audio Prestige. This is a top of the range IEM from T-Audio. I want to say a huge thanks to start with to Linsol for sending this pair over. And I know that many of you are interested in knowing how this compares to the Monarch Mark II, which sits just a bit lower in price and has also been released for longer. And so I'm going to cover that off. Also comparisons to the IE900 and even the Zen's top that I reviewed last month. But let's get started with a close look at the beautifully designed T-Audio Prestige. The Prestige retails for US$1,300, making it a fairly expensive IEM, but by no means the most expensive out there. It's still nowhere near some of the three and $4,000 IEMs on the market. For your money, what you're getting when you buy these is that within each earpiece, there's a single dynamic driver, four balanced armatures, and four electrostatic drivers. There's lots and lots of drivers going on here. It's not always about driver count. Sometimes they help, sometimes they hinder, but there's lots going on inside each of these. That combination of drivers gives us an 11 ohm IEM, which is pretty low impedance. And it's also got a 95 decibel sensitivity, which is very low for an IEM. That doesn't make them difficult to drive. 95 decibels means you can still run them pretty much off anything, but it's very low for IEMs, which are often above 100 and even 110 to 120 decibel sensitivity. And for those not familiar with sensitivity, the higher the number, the easier it is to drive. While we're talking design and specs and things like that, let me talk about what you get with the IEMs and also how they're designed. And we might start with the accessories. You get this zip up carry case. It's very basic, nothing special, but it does the job. You also get a small selection of tips and the tips are good quality, but there's not as many of them as you are getting used to seeing in some cheaper priced IEMs. Now, whether that's good or bad, I'll leave up to you. If you're anything like me, you've probably got a whole collection of aftermarket tips anyway, so it's not a big deal. But if it's your first foray into IEMs and you happen to have gone to a top tier option like this one, then you might be disappointed to find that there's only a small selection of tips. Specifically, you get a small bag of silicon tips and a small bag of foam tips. Where the accessories get better though, is in the case of the cable. These come with a lovely cable, both in terms of ergonomics, but also sound, and I'll get to that shortly. But what's going on here is we've got a 6N OCC copper cable, which is silver plated and also has graphene through it as well. And so my understanding is that you've got some copper that's silver plated, you've also got some graphene strands that are silver plated, and they're all combined to make the overall cable. Now I know some people don't care or believe in the sonics of cables, so we're going to get to that separately in a second. The first thing I want to mention is I think it's a lovely looking and feeling cable. It's got a very understated colour to it, it feels very comfortable when it's draped across your shoulders, and it's just generally a joy to use. A part of that joy is the fact that on this end here, which looks a bit funny at the moment, on this end, you've got three different connectors. And again, this is something that we're starting to become more and more used to seeing, and that is these modular cables. So very easily, you can change this between a 2.5mm balanced cable, a 3.5mm single-ended or unbalanced cable, or a 4.4mm balanced cable. And that's fantastic. It means whatever device you're using at the time, you've got connectors to make it suit that, without having to have lots of different adapters, fly leads, etc. I should mention that at the other end of the cable, there's using two pin connections as are most IEMs I think on the market now. It seems to me lately that MMCX is becoming less common rather than more common. And then speaking of the design of the IEMs themselves, they're a really lovely molded kind of acrylic design. It's what I sometimes refer to as a pseudo custom design. And what I mean by that is that the actual housing is heavily molded to fit the average ear. And it's done in such a way that if you don't have an average ear, which realistically no one does, it's still gonna be comfortable for you but it's contoured to fit effectively in the ear. We've then got a nozzle at the end, which is stainless steel, I believe. It's a decent size and depth. It's not too long or too thick. 
and even in my ears, which can be a bit troublesome, I still find these very comfortable. If you're familiar with the Monarch Mark II, which we'll talk about sonically soon, but if you're familiar with that and its size, the Prestige is significantly smaller in terms of the shell size. So if you've tried the Monarch Mark II and it was too big for your ears, you may have better luck with the Prestige, but that also depends on whether you like the sound of what I'm about to say about the tuning of these, and we will get to that very shortly. Before we get to that though, I just want to circle back to the cable. Now I've found over the years that when I've tried different cables with different kind of unique and exotic materials, I very rarely find them any better and often they're worse than just a pure simple copper. Having said that, I've tried a graphene based cable in the past where it's a mixture of graphene and copper or graphene and silver, whatever it was, and the graphene brings a really interesting character to the sound. And I was interested to have a listen to the Prestige with their stock cable and then also compare it with a plain copper cable to see if it was actually bringing any benefits or if it was just a fancy marketing trick. And I have to say, I really like how these sound with their stock cable. I'm not going to sit here and say it's better with the stock cable, but I like the characteristics that it brings and I'm wondering if they've actually deliberately tuned the IEM to suit the cable that goes with it as opposed to designing the IEM and then plucking some cable off the shelf. Specifically what I found, and I'm starting to verge into sound quality here, but I'm not going to go right into it yet, but what I found was the stock cable helps with image separation on the Prestige. It helps them to pull apart the sound in a really effective way that doesn't become incoherent. It keeps an overall coherent sound, but it just helps with separation and imaging and is generally very enjoyable. I think a copper cable does make these slightly smoother, but I also don't know that they need that. And so with that said, now's probably a good time to get into how these sound, and what I should clarify is that all of my listening notes, all of my impressions are done with the stock cable and the stock tips in place. I did try a bunch of different tips on these, and they're actually fairly immune to tip changes. They're an IEM that for whatever reason, and it could be the exact size and shape of the housing and the nozzle, for whatever reason they didn't alter a great deal when I tried different tips on them. So I think most people can be fairly confident that what I'm about to say is going to be largely accurate for everybody. Of course, your internal ear canal anatomy can change that. I've talked about that in a separate video. But hopefully what I'm about to say will give you a good sense of how they sound and be pretty transferable to your ears as they are on mine. Trying to work out what gear you should buy next? Have a look at the Passion for Sound Recommends link down in the description below. Clicking on the link will take you through to my recommended product database. Once you're in the database, you can use the filter button up the top to choose which sorts of product types you want to have a look at. Maybe headphones, maybe DACs, maybe amps. Choose the one or ones that you want to see from this list. And then you can also sort the list by price if you want to, or other features as well. You'll then see a consolidated list just of the product types you want to have a look at, including things like what the retail price was when I last checked. You've got links to my reviews of each product, and then also links to where you can go and buy them. Feel free to play around with the filters and sorting options as much as you like to find the gear you're looking for, and I hope that this database points you in just the right direction for you. So happy hunting, happy listening, and now let's get back to the review. Starting off with treble, and the Prestige give a lovely sense of extended, sparkly treble, but without getting sibilant. There's a great balance between refinement and smoothness of the treble without losing any sense of sparkle or clarity. It's a really nice tuning. Sounds like cymbals have a lot of shimmer to them. That might be a bit over enhanced due to the way the frequency response has been tuned, but it's very well delivered. It's not unnatural in the sense that it sounds right. It just sounds like it's being slightly amplified over and above some other sounds perhaps, but not in a distracting way. Moving down to the mid-range, and the way these are tuned brings forward the textures and the details, but not at the expense of body and richness in vocals. Again, there's a nice balance being run here. The Prestige managed to isolate the vocals in the mix, so you can really focus in on the vocals, the main instruments if you want to. And probably the thing that stood out to me the most about the mid-range is it's very tangible. There's a sense of solidity to the mids, and that comes from a combination of factors. First of all, there's enough presence there to give it body and weight through the mid-range. There's enough texture to help define the mid-range. And then the quality of imaging and separation that I'll talk about more in a moment, all of that combines, along with some transient qualities from the treble as well, all of that combines to make the mid-range really tangible, really present in the mix. It's thoroughly enjoyable. Moving down into the bass, and we've got a decent sense of punch and thump and presence. And the Prestige can rumble quite low, but they maybe don't have a direct linear response all the way down. There's probably just a hint of roll off there towards the bottom. I think for most people, there's definitely going to be enough presence and weight and even extension, but they're not quite as bassy as some other options, such as say the Monarch Mark II. The Prestige are a little bit more even handed in the bass for better or worse. So if you know yourself to be a bass lover or a bass head, the Prestige might not quite satisfy that itch. 
But I think for most people and for those looking for a more neutral and maybe more tonally accurate sound, then I do think the Prestige is a really nice tuning. And so overall, I'd say that the Prestige is what I would call a fairly neutral tuning, a fairly natural tuning. It's got a slight lean into texture and clarity, but I wouldn't call it bright or clinical or analytical at all. If anything, I'd call it pretty natural. Moving into some of the technical aspects of the Prestige, and technically they're also very strong. Their sense of detail retrieval is excellent. And as I've already mentioned, their ability to give you that texture and that clarity is fantastic, but really well balanced. It's not overdone, but it is slightly enhanced, I think. And so for those that love to hear textures and the fine nuances and details in the music, the Prestige could be just right for you. They also produce a great sense of space for an IEM. They're not going to throw a soundstage like a full-sized headphone, but they're much better than a lot of IEMs and give a really good sense of space. They've got an excellent sense of left-right width and separation in that space. And then the depth and layering is quite good as well. It is all inside the head still, but there's enough layering and enough depth that things never feel congested and you can clearly hear where each individual sound is within the soundstage. I do find that occasionally if I was being really picky, I feel like they sort of over separate just a little bit and that could come back to the cable characteristics I spoke about before. And so I do think that maybe they're very slightly over enhancing separation, but it never came in a way that I felt it was distracting. I noticed it when I was specifically listening and considering how natural it was, but in just general enjoyment listening, it was never an issue for me and I actually found it really interesting and exciting overall. And a big part of that is that their image focus is absolutely razor sharp. They do such a good job of defining the edges of each sound in space. And so you can really pick out exactly where everything is and it's beautifully defined and beautifully focused. Ultimately, I think they're technically a wonderful IEM. And on top of that, I think their tonal balance is great too. And so all in all, they're so far proving to be excellent. But let's talk quickly about a couple of genres or a couple of sort of styles of music just to see how they might fit for you. On classical music, these are absolutely fantastic. They've got the frequency range to give you the body and the drama of the orchestra, while also capturing the texture and the clarity of the orchestra. And they've got the layering and the soundstage size and image placement to give you a really good sense of where sounds are coming from without the orchestra ever feeling like it's congested or everyone's sitting on top of each other. So they're great for classical lovers. They're a high recommendation from me if you're into your classical music. Moving over to more rock and groove based tracks. And on those, I also think they're strong. Maybe not quite as strong though. And that's because they do put texture and clarity a little bit forward. And that can make it difficult to listen at louder volume sometimes. At normal listening levels, they balance off really well the weight and the body of the bass with the kind of that transient energy and the sense of clarity and attack. But if you do like to listen a bit louder, or if you just like a bit of extra bass to help you feel the rhythm of the music, the Prestige may not be the absolute best choice there. They're still very, very good, but maybe not my absolute go-to for a pure fun IEM. And so at this point in my testing, I was really impressed with the Prestige. I think for $1,300, they're an expensive IEM, but there was nothing about them other than maybe the tip selection, which is a really minor issue. There was nothing else about them that let me down. I felt like they absolutely lived up to my expectations for an IEM at that price based on their comfort, their accessories in terms of their cable quality and the build quality of them. All of that for me was stacking up really well. But as is always the case, you never know if this is one of those things that in isolation they're good and then you put them up against the competition and you kind of go, oh, maybe there's a better choice out there. So let's jump into some comparisons now and see how they stack up. The first comparison I went for was probably the most obvious one, and that's with the slightly cheaper T-Audio Monarch Mark II. I reviewed those a while ago, and I liked them, but I didn't necessarily love them in all situations. They've got a slightly unbalanced tuning in some ways, and so I was curious to see if what they did well was enough to make them as good as the Prestige, or if the Prestige was able to justify its price tag. One of the tracks I used for this test was Hell is Round the Corner by Tricky, and starting with the Prestige, the bass was really tight from them, the sound of the crackling record that's used in this track was crisp and clean, but not over enhanced. It didn't dominate the sound. The vocals were textured, but still smooth enough to be enjoyable. And all of the different samples that are used to put together this track all had their own sense of space, but still made a coherent whole. So overall, it was a very good listen. 
Moving over to the Monarch, and this track happened to highlight one of my issues with the Monarch, and that is that the mid bass felt a bit pulled back compared to the Prestige. There was a bit of a dip or a bit of a hollow in the mid bass, and then you could actually hear it picking up its intensity as the bass went lower. And that was one of my issues with the Monarch was the way it just threw the balance of bass off. They can tend to be quite bassy and punchy when there's deep sub bass, but they can also feel just a little bit anemic and detached from the rest of the audio frequencies when you get into that mid bass zone. And so this track did show that off, and the Prestige was coming out sounding just a bit more balanced, a bit more linear through the bass in that regard. Those record crackles were a little bit more enhanced from the Monarch Mark II, but still not too far, so they were enjoyable still, they weren't distracting. And what became really evident was that the Monarch Mark II gives you more sense of texture in the mids and vocals. It's got that slightly more forward sound in those upper mids that some people love. I personally am neither here nor there if it's well balanced. And it is well balanced between both of these. So both present those upper mids and those sort of high vocal sounds very well. It's just going to depend on whether you like that sort of harmonesque tuning of it being a bit forward or something that's a bit more pulled back, a bit more controlled. And that's probably my preference ever so slightly. When it came to the separation of the vocals and the different samples in the track, I feel like the Monarch Mark II was quite interesting. It sort of separated the vocals a little bit more compared to what the Prestige did. But what it then did was it sort of merged all of the samples more together. So what I mean is it was like in the Monarch Mark II, the vocal was clear and present out in front, probably because of that more present upper mid-range and treble side of things. But then everything in the background was a bit more muddied and a bit more muddled. It wasn't overly muddled. It was just that in comparison to the excellent separation and clarity of placement that the Prestige has, the Monarch Mark II was just a bit different. And for me personally, I probably prefer what the Prestige is doing over the Monarch Mark II, but it's by a very small margin. And so ultimately, in this particular comparison, I think both are fantastic IEMs, and it's going to be a very preferential choice. I think the Prestige is tonally the more balanced, more natural IEM. I think it separates sounds better. It has a better sense of imaging and staging. But there are absolutely going to be those of you that prefer the more textural sound of the Monarch Mark II. Many people are going to be won over by the Monarch's ability to put all of that texture and detail forward and present and obvious. Whereas I think in some ways the Prestige is a little bit more subtle. It doesn't kind of shine a light on all the textures. It doesn't shine a light on the technicalities. It just does them in a very easy and relaxed way. Not relaxed in the sense of the sound being overly smooth, but the fact that everything's done in an easy way. It just flows through the technicalities. It never breaks a sweat and it just delivers the music beautifully. So for me, I think the Prestige is worth the extra money, but it's quite a different tuning, quite a different presentation, and so some will like the Monarch Mark II, even though I prefer the Prestige. But let's not stop there. Let's now go on and look at another IEM that I think is fantastic, and that's the Sennheiser i 900 Ever since the i 900s arrived here, they've been my go-to kind of reference IEM. Other than the Shure KSE 1200, which is an electrostatic IEM, it's a bit more hassle and a bit more fiddle because you've got an extra box you need to carry. But if I'm looking for a go-to, high-quality, simple plug-and-play IEM, the i900 is it. And so with the Prestige here, I had to find out which one was better. One of the tracks I used for this test was Good Riddance by Green Day. And starting with the i900s, the sound was just so crisp and so clean. The vocals and guitars are really well separated here. And the i900s present a slightly dry, kind of slightly upper mid focus sound, but it's done in a way that's really enjoyable still. Overall, their tonality is quite well balanced, but it does lean a little bit dry. When the strings come in, they sound great, they sound clean, they sound crisp but natural, and the bass in the track is present but not overdone. And that's one of the things I love about the i900 is it's got bass that is very flat, very linear, and so it just does bass as it's in the recording. It doesn't lift in the sub bass, it doesn't cut in the mid bass, it doesn't raise in the mid bass to give an extra sense of punch, it just delivers it in a very balanced way. And so for me, the i900 was sounding great on this track. It's not perfect. As I said, it still leans a little bit dry. It's a little bit upper mid focus that's not entirely natural, perhaps. But overall, it was sounding good. Moving over to the Prestige, and the first thing I noticed because this track opens with the strummed guitar, was that there's a bit of extra upper end kind of twang on the guitar. The extra treble energy from the Prestige just highlighted the twang, kind of the, it's not the strum, it's not the initial kind of stroke of the fingers across the strings of the guitar. It's more sort of the upper frequency resonance, perhaps, of those initial strums. And that's why I'm calling it twang. It just had a little bit of extra sound to it that I didn't notice from the i900. And I'm not saying one's right or wrong, or better or worse, it was just a bit different. 
What that extra treble emphasis also meant was that the vocals are a bit less pronounced from the prestige, so it's like the guitar comes across a bit louder compared to the vocals than it did on the i900s, and that's because of that extra bit of treble emphasis. Again, it's not necessarily bad. I probably feel like the i900 was slightly more natural sounding on this track in terms of the balance between those two, but it wasn't bad in either case. And so listening to this track, it didn't tell me a great deal. Both IEM sounded good, both sounded different, neither sounded perfect. And so I think maybe the i900 was a little bit more tonally balanced because of that bit of twanginess in the guitar I mentioned and the way the vocals and the guitars weren't quite as well balanced with each other on the prestige, but that can sometimes just be the track. And so I moved over to another track, which was Heatstroke by Calvin Harris. And on this track, the i900 was just a bit too dry. I felt like I needed to turn up the volume to get it to sound the way I wanted it to, but with the i900, it got a bit too aggressive as I turned it up, and so I couldn't find the right balance. With the Prestige, it's got a little bit of contouring, I'd say, in the bass. It's not dead flat. It gives you a little bit of extra warmth when it needs to, and that really helped me to enjoy this track more on the Prestige. It did still bite a little bit. This is not the cleanest recording ever. It's got a little bit of aggression in the upper frequencies at times, or edginess, perhaps, I should say, or harshness, whatever term you want to use. And I feel like the Prestige managed that a bit better because of the way the bass is tuned. And so where this left me was that I think for me, the i900 and the Prestige kind of go neck and neck. They're both technically very strong, they're both tonally a little bit different, and I would happily pick up either and expect nothing but enjoyment in my listening session. There are times that the IE900 is going to sound better because it is a bit more neutral, it is a bit more flat, but it's also a bit more dry. And then there's times that the Prestige is going to sound better because it does separate things a bit more, sometimes probably technically not as naturally as it should, but it still sounds great. So it's going to separate things a bit more. It's going to give you a bit of a different bass presentation that can help to offset if you've got some harsher treble or you want that little bit of extra bass punch. And so for me, they're both IEMs I'd gladly use. I think comfort-wise, I'd give a slight edge to the i 900 because it's so compact and it fits so nicely, but both are excellent IEMs and you really can't go wrong with either. But before I wrap things up there, if you saw my previous review of the Zen's Manger Top IEM, also from Linsol, what you'll know is that I loved those. And I was very curious, and I figured many of you would be curious, to see if the Zen's Top could actually stack up against the much more expensive Prestige. Listening to Wire to Wire by Razorlight through both of these IEMs, and they're absolutely both excellent. The Prestige balances everything really nicely. It gives you a good sense of punch from the kick drum that plays occasionally through this track. And everything's just natural and balanced, very, very enjoyable overall. Moving over to the tops, and I feel like they just ever so slightly overdo the texture, but in doing so, it brings a lot of emphasis and focus on the vocals. And so for pure vocal lovers, the tops could actually be a better choice. I'm not saying they're the better I am, but if you want to focus in on vocals and hear the textures and the details on vocals, that's where the tops have a strength and the prestige don't so much because the prestige are a bit more balanced. The tops don't have quite the same level of refinement in the sound as the Prestige do. And so ultimately what I'd say is that, for me at least, I can hear why you would spend more on the Prestige. They definitely do show that you're spending money on a bit more refinement. I think the build quality and accessory quality is a little bit better. And when I say accessory quality, I'm really saying cable. But I also think they've got very different tuning styles. And I can absolutely imagine people having both. I can see people having the tops in their collection for specific listening to maybe vocalists, even classical because they've got a slightly different classical presentation. And then you might have something like the Prestige for your all-rounder, maybe for music where you don't want quite as much texture and aggression. And so both are fantastic IEMs, but I do think the Prestige is worth the extra. I probably should mention before I wrap up that the Prestige also outperforms the top in terms of its ability to separate sounds, the sense of staging size and image placement and focus is all just that bit better because of the extra refinement that you're getting with the Prestige. So again, both are excellent, but it is worth spending more in my opinion if you like what I've said about the Prestige. And so at this point, I'm going to wrap things up by saying I think the Prestige are one of the better IEMs on the market, particularly at the price point. And as I discussed recently when I reviewed the very expensive EXT and Phoenix from Visioneers, I don't know that it's worth spending a lot more than, say, sort of $1,300 odd on a pair of IEMs. The returns you get, based on what I've heard so far, are getting very, very minimal, and in many cases, they're just different rather than better. And so what that means is that the Prestige, I think, are brilliant value. 
they're giving you one of the best sounding IMs on the market without spending three or $4,000. They're also beautiful, they're comfortable, they've got a lovely cable, and so I think they're a pretty good choice. So they're a product that I'm going to very happily recommend, and I hope that my descriptions of them here have helped you to understand what they offer and if they're a good fit for you. As always, if you have found the video useful, helpful, or interesting, I'd love it if you hit the like button, and consider subscribing and ringing the notification bell if you haven't already. But for now, let me leave it to the music, so happy listening, and I'll see you here next time on Passion for Sound.